Okay, so let's jump into this video and start talking about the alternate load inputs we can use in our main VE fuel table. So we're gonna be finding situations where we can't use the map sensor as the load input for our main VE table. We're not gonna be able to calculate our fuel delivery properly. And this is gonna be a situation if you have an extremely large throttle body or maybe individual throttle bodies, we're gonna be finding we have to use the alpha end mode where we use throttle position for our load input. Now we also have some other uh, options available to us. We're gonna be seeing we can use a barometric pressure sensor and compare our map and our barometric pressure as we're driving around for naturally aspirated or supercharged applications. We're gonna be finding in this situation, we're able to compensate for the elevation change or barometric pressure change as we're driving around. We don't have to have a sub map that's gonna compensate. It's all gonna do the calculations right into our main VE table. Now, if we're in a turbocharged engine, we can also use a map over exhaust manifold pressure relationship. We're gonna be taking a look at that and seeing how that works. That's gonna allow us to characterize the efficiency of the engine on a turbocharge application when the exhaust pressure changes as we turn up the boost. It's gonna be more of an advanced feature and I'll we'll be walking you through what you need to know to implement it successfully. So without further wait, let's jump in so we can check all these out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at our alternate fuel load inputs that we can have in our volumetric efficiency style fuel strategy. We can see the default that's gonna be in here uh, right off the bat is our fuel load based on our manifold pressure. And we can see manifold pressure here is negative 10 PSI. And we can see that our little uh, blue triangle showing us right where we're at, our blue circle showing us the exact cell point or position in the table. We can see it's here because our RPM is at 2350. We can see it we're at between 25 and 2000. So this is indicating where we're operating at in the table. We can also look at our three dimensional view here and see this little blue triangle as well. So we're gonna be finding that this is gonna be the primary means of our fuel calculation for most setups. But we will get into some situations where our map pressure is not going to be a good indication for our actual air mass uh, in, in referencing our cell points. And this is gonna occur if we have something like individual throttle bodies installed on our engine. So as we rev the engine, we're gonna be finding that our map pressure is gonna to be too wildly changing. Um, we might go from something like negative 10 PSI all the way to zero PSI extremely quick because there's such a rapid change in air mass and our manifold pressure simply isn't going to be able to characterize that air mass coming in. So that's gonna create a huge, huge problem. And we're gonna be finding that having, again, our table based on our map pressure is not going to be suitable for that application. So what we have to do in this situation is put our ECU into an alpha end mode, where it's gonna go in and reference our throttle position sensor instead of our actual map pressure here on our load input. In order to do this, we're gonna jump the setup here, main setup, we're going to be going into fuel load type under engine here. Um, we're going to be finding, we're going to change it from our map sensor down into throttle position. Now we can see we have this other choice here, air mass per cylinder. If I click this, we can see it gets into red, it goes into air. And this is because we don't have a mass airflow sensor installed on our engine. We're not operating here under